it has um, uh, been actually one of the major reasons why I decided to come to MIT as a junior faculty back in the day, eight years ago, was the proximity to uh, really spectacular material scientists like Yul Fink, who is a pioneer in multi-material fibers and who was also incredibly generous to our lab and collaborated with us and allowed us to use some of his resources to produce uh, our fibers until we built all our own infrastructure. Uh, and at the same time, of course, it was very important to have world-class neuroscience program uh, leading institute, um, McGovern and Picover institutes here at MIT and b to be able to interface those two worlds uh, in a seamless manner. So opening of the NanoLab is um, really uh, a monumental step for MIT and uh, it is incredibly um, crucial for my lab because what but especially when we are developing some of those magnetic nanomaterials for our research, it is very important for us to understand how structure of those magnetic nanomaterials translates into function. And having state-of-the-art facility that can house state-of-the-art electron microscopes, for example, will allow us to map the structures of those particles with, the, uh, with atomic precision and that will allow us to engineer those particles for biomedical applications in a much more informed way, rather than just essentially cooking with uh, various precursors, we would be able to plan our particles ab initio and then use those sophisticated facilities to characterize them and make those linkages. The location of MIT Nano is, of course, uh, uniquely suited for collaboration because it's uh, right in the middle of campus and it connects material science to electrical engineering to physics to chemistry to biological engineering to chemical engineering and of course um, it's not such a long way from biology or neuroscience so it would um, hopefully act as a smelting pot for uh, collaborations and for interesting interdisciplinary research and that for someone like myself who w already works at the intersection of multiple disciplines having a resource that is very uh, forgiving of strange materials strange devices things that a normal fabrication facility a normal imaging facility will simply be unwilling to handle for us will be uh, really critical and will advance our capabilities the um, uh, interactions through industrial liaison program have been uh, interesting and actually has been quite fruitful in the one specific case where we have a, a visiting researcher from NAC, uh, Dr. Tomo Tanaka, who is spending a year with us working as a researcher alongside my team uh, on applications of fiber technologies to uh, neuroscience and uh, it has um, uh, been learning process for him as well as been uh, really uh, useful for us because he's a real engineer with real industry experience and the way he approaches problems are just a lot more focused and um, just a lot more skillful, I would say. And um, at the same time, for him, it's a, a wonderful playground experience where he gets to work on problems that are pretty far out and he gets to see the frontier and as he uh, develops as a leader within NAC uh, it will uh, hopefully will uh, result in further partnerships for us to be able to translate some of those collaborations that are just sort of starting right now into things that um, they might get interested in the future. MIT is uh, unique uh, in uh, to be able to perform this type of research because of the strength of the School of Engineering and incredible colleagues that we have in the School of Engineering and also the strength of neuroscience and the wonderful colleagues that we have uh, in neuroscience as well. And the ability to be able to do both at the highest level requires a really unusual infrastructure and also unusual risk-taking from the school and MIT was willing to take that risk 
uh, early on with my lab and continues to take that risk uh, uh, until the present day.